All right, our second speed networking round is starting right now, and we are continuing the discussion about warehouse robotics. Head on over to the agenda for the link to access that. And also our second demo is coming up right now. We have a trio of students from Berkeley's Artificial Intelligence Research Lab to showcase the latest breakthroughs in robotics learning. We've got a robot observing YouTube videos and trying to get a real good understanding of what's going on in the world. So understanding physics, like how objects move. Let's say, you know, we've got a video of a human having an apple and dropping it, then it'll understand some concepts there. And so the idea is trying to make the robot learn as quickly as possible from new data that we give it. So normally it can sometimes take hundreds of demos to perform a new task. Whereas now we just can give a handful of demos, maybe 10, and then it can do this new task. The technique that we're employing is a kind of contrastive learning setup where it takes in the YouTube video and it kind of patches out a bunch of areas in that YouTube video. And the idea is that the robot is trying to then reconstruct that image. So you can already kind of maybe see where this understanding is coming from. It has to understand what could be in those patches in order to then generate this idea of what could be behind there, right? So it has to get like a really good understanding of what's going on in the world. What we're doing here is I'm controlling the robot through this VR device. The VR is mapped directly to the robot actions. If I move forward, for example, the robot is also going to move forward. So I can give demonstrations through using this VR controller. The demonstrations that I'm giving are to grasp a cube and lift it. Now, another way that I can give demonstrations is that I, I'm grabbing the robot and I'm moving it physically. So I'm grabbing hold of the robot and moving it through the world. And this is very good for tasks that involve contacts. Whereas compare that with the teleop, the VR controller, I have no idea of what the robot is feeling. So the way you give demonstrations does vary quite differently from what you actually want the robot to eventually do. There's gonna be some combination eventually of observing video data and getting understanding, then observing a, a human and giving, say, actions of what it could do, but then also another stage perhaps of uh, an area called reinforcement learning, which is where it kind of explores by itself and then gets reward for the environment. Whereas Steven's work is trying to pre-train the visual cortex system, my work tries to extract motor movements. It tries to extract behaviors by observing German Shepherds in YouTube videos, or humans in YouTube videos, motion capture data sets, such that when we extract these motions and these skills, we can then use them for downstream tasks. So let's say I've watched a ton of YouTube videos, and now I have one robot that can do a bunch of move motions, like turning, walking, running. Can I then use this for something downstream, like going to a particular location, or moving in a particular way? It starts off with collecting a variety of motion capture data sets or YouTube videos. And these are then used to train what you might think of as a judge. And the judge says, yes, this looks like a motion that came from YouTube data. Or no, that looks like something the robot has done and it doesn't look natural at all. Then the robot is trained to fool the judge or what we call a discriminator in order to make it believe that the motions that it's observing, that the judge is observing, actually came from the YouTube data set. Ultimately, through this pipeline, you get the policy, or the robot, to move in a way that matches or looks very similar to the YouTube videos. State of the art uses 15 term reward functions, you know, each one um, denoting one particular style of the motion. But using 4.5 seconds of German Shepherd motion capture data, we specify a complete reward that is still flexible enough to allow the robot to move in many different ways. You'll see it turning, you'll see it running, walking, while still looking German Shepherd-like. For this project, we have developed algorithms for learning world models automatically by interacting with the environment. And we've seen those be much more efficient in learning from small amount of data than typical deep reinforcement learning algorithms that need a lot of trial and error. And so through this world model and the planning, we've become efficient enough to directly learn on the hardware on a real robot without the need for a simulator. 
So traditionally, you would start out with a simulator that specifies your robot and all the things in the environment that are needed for the task. And then you would do a lot of simulation, you know, much faster than real time, to come up with a particular behavior or strategy, and then you would run it on a real robot. But it will not adapt to changes to, in the environment. It will be hard to teach it new tasks because you have to go back to the simulator. And so there will always be a difference between the simulator and the real world and that will limit the capabilities and especially adapting to new tasks. So what we do instead is directly learn on the hardware. The system basically builds up its own model of the environment, a little bit like a simulator, but all learned just from its sensory inputs and by interacting with the environment. And so through this model, it will then do a lot of internal imagination or simulation to come up with good behaviors and we'll actually be able to see it learn real time learn new behaviors for the first time, train this robot dog, starting on its back, wiggling around with his arms, no prior knowledge, learn to stand up, get on its front, stand up and start walking in just one hour of real time. And then we start pushing it and initially it just doesn't know what to do, it falls over and is crude and then it has to figure out how to get back up. But after five to ten minutes it actually becomes robust and incorporates all this new knowledge which you wouldn't be able to if you just deployed a pre-trained behavior. And it ends up being very robust yeah. to being pushed over, either avoids or flips over and gets back on its feet. I think the holy grail of robot learning is to learn as much as you can in the real world and as quickly as you can. And you're just more flexible, you're not limited to what your simulator can describe, you're not limited by what you can think of when you design the simulation by hand.